You can't just kick me out. Oh, this is such bull- I'll make a survival let's play. But don't worry, she won't be jokes. I like it, Kaji. What, does he have nothing else better? Move! 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 No. He's back! Go away! He's camping! And there we... Go. There, look familiar? The heck is that? Is that a... Is that a floating... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, stupid fucking government not fixing all these potholes. Bad enough I've been stuck on this bloody asshole for the last 20,000 minutes. Where the hell is me? And how they get Thomas the Tank Engine in Minecraft? Danny! What the hell are you doing here? You're supposed to be working back at the office. Get your ass down here. Hey, it's the funny tuxedo man. Danny, what are you doing here? And why in the fuck is there a train above my base? Uh... <clears throat> what are you talking about? What am I talking about? I'm talking about the train that you have floating above my- Where did you send that train? Whatever. Why are you here anyway? To torment me some more? Nah, mate. I just came to tell you that I'm now the new CEO of fucking Wang Enterprise. They seriously replaced me with you? And the company hasn't gone into flames yet? Yeah. Yeah. Bread. Um... Thanks? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Classic Craft. If you haven't seen the pilot episode, I highly advise you do so, but I bet you've already seen it because what kind of psychopath just skips straight to episode 2 in a series? Regardless if you've seen it or not, you probably saw the recap at the beginning of this video. YOU SON OF A BITCH! And so, that is where we continue from. Me getting uppercutted into the atmosphere after recording last episode's outro. As you can see, my tombstone is currently floating in midair, so before I can even begin this episode properly, I have to retrieve my belongings again. I can't believe they actually put my tombstone up in the air. They couldn't have put it on the ground, huh? Oh, let's make his life even worse than it already is. Make his loot float so he has to climb up and get it. When Guardian Leviosa my ass. Now that I have my stuff back, you're probably asking, Knight, what's the goal of this episode? And the answer to that is complicated. Why? Because there are so many things to do in Minecraft, and there are even more things to do in modded Minecraft. So much so to the point where I don't even know where to begin. There are so many mods in this pack, and I don't even know where to start. Tinker's Construct, Immersive Engineering, the superhero mods, you get the point. Mods overcomplicate Minecraft to the max, and to put things into perspective for you, I can barely work with redstone, and if I struggle with redstone, I can't even imagine beginning to understand half the shit in this mod pack. I'm sorry, but I've always been more of a builder in my Minecraft career than anything else. So in terms of a goal for this episode, 
I'd say we focus on exploring and filling out our map. I've also came to the conclusion that I'm not going to live in a cuck shed for this entire series. So I want to begin production on a house at some point, maybe not this episode, but maybe in the next episode or the episode after that, if I decide to make it that far because my sanity is slowly slipping as we speak. But the thing is, I don't want a stereotypical beginner Minecraft base, you know? I don't want a wood house like everyone else. My name is Nightwing7974. I'm Mr. Wang, a Minecraft billionaire and proud member of the Minecraft 1% and the most handsome and dapper businessman to ever grace the blocky landscape. To prove my last name is the biggest in Minecraft, I'm going big or going home. I don't want a house. I want a mansion. I want a manor. I want Wang manor. You're probably saying to yourself, that is a huge task. Have you seen the size of a typical Minecraft mansion? They're massive. And to that I say, you're right. But I want to differ my play style in this series from your typical survival let's play. Because if I don't, what's the point in even watching? I know your ass ain't watching for me, because if that was true, you would be willing to watch me no matter what I do. So if I sat here doing that stupid TikTok Live AI trend, you'd click off faster than I would die in a hardcore world. Yes, 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 yes. Mmm, ice cream so good. Gang, 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 gang. Thanks for the crown, I'm the Nostalgia King. Thanks for the water gun, I'll spray Mervin's ass with it later. Oh. Hey, Mervin, um... How are you doing? Ah, <sighs> my disappointment. But at least I'm rich. <laughs> You see what I mean? Everyone plays Minecraft differently. For me, I have no other choice but to take my time with progress. Because if I just dive right into all these mods super fast, it won't be fun for me since I'll have a bigger migraine than what I typically get. So my apologies if you're expecting the pace and progress of a Luke the Notable 100 Days video. It's just too much for me. But hey, if you're still willing to continue this series and this adventure with me, we're in this together. I used my ore I obtained from last episode to finally craft my myself some armor, and hopefully now I'll be able to at least put up somewhat of a chance. I noticed something out in the distance along the horizon, and I decided I had nothing else better to do, so I investigated it. Upon closer inspection, I realized it was a base. A naturally generated base or structure, it seemed. Inside there were things such as loot chests, an anvil, a brewing stand, a bed, Basically everything you need to survive in Minecraft. The loot chests were pretty helpful as well, containing brewing materials, music discs, and enough iron to allow me to complete my first ever set of armor in Classicraft. When I looked at the map, I noticed there was yet another survival base only a hundred or so blocks southeast of this one. If you couldn't tell by my mouse movements, I was very excited. Finding generated structures was always one of my favorite things to do in survival mode. Very few feelings back in the day were able to compare to finding a village with a blacksmith. Once I slept, I was planning first thing in the morning to get to that other base. What the hell is happening? What the- Holy fuck, am I having an exorcism? Wh what just happened? I- I'm so confused. You know, if I actually knew any Latin, that would have made that whole scenario a hell of a lot funnier. Just levitating off the bed and shit with my head spinning a full 360. Your hell and torment won't end here, Mervin. I'm dragging your ass to hell with me where you'll work for me for all of eternity. Plus, I heard Satan make some pretty damn good meatballs. <laughs> oh, I'm way too tired for this shit. Unfortunately for me, however, it didn't matter how tired I was because my luck was about to change for the worst. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You know, I knew this was going to happen eventually, but I wasn't expecting it to happen this early on. In case you need a refresher of the rules of Classic Craft, rule number one states that whenever I encounter a lucky block out in the wild, I am forced to open it. As you can see, this lucky block is surrounded by obsidian and netherrack, meaning this block in particular is a very unlucky block. Also meaning the chance of death is likely. <laughs> well, not like my luck can get much worse. Here goes nothing. Oh, you're seriously gonna make me do this, huh? 
If you grew up watching a certain Lucky Block Challenge game series here on YouTube, you know exactly what these wells are all about. You're given a coin, and you have to toss it in said well to either be rewarded with loot or death. But no matter what, you're guaranteed 9 iron blocks and a beacon underneath the well. Now, I'm gonna say this. I chose not to grab the beacon for a couple of reasons. One, it's episode two. This could help me out tremendously, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't feel right to have a beacon this early, you know what I mean? It would just feel super weird to have a beacon at this stage in the game. And the other reason... No take beacon from the well! Why you no why, take... What, no, why you no... <laughs> Alright. I've already been through too much in this series already and it's only episode 2. So it can't be that bad, right? Here we go. Your death wish came to- Nope, I knew it! I knew it! I knew- <sighs> I- I have no idea how I survived that. Honestly, I'd say I cheated death. Also, how the hell did they fit that many explosives inside of one well? Nonetheless, I'm happy I survived my first ever lucky block in this series. But knowing my luck, I'm probably in a Final Destination movie. Well, there's my first close encounter with death this episode. I bet there won't be any more of those for the remainder of this video. I grabbed what remained of the iron blocks and headed over to the second survivor base. But right before I entered, I noticed a very peculiar structure in the distance. I couldn't make out what it was in the slightest, so I figured that'll be my next destination. This survivor base was set up the same as the previous one, except this one had the doors ripped off. Made me wonder what could have possibly done that. Inside this chest was one music disc, and it was blocks. This got me a bit excited since I now had three unique music discs. It kind of brought a nostalgic wave over me since it reminded me of when you could collect all the different records in the Xbox 360 tutorial world. Once all the resources were pillaged from the base, I marched my way over to the strange structure I spotted earlier. Even when I got closer to the thing, I still couldn't figure out what the hell it was. It was it wasn't until I broke into it and stepped inside that I realized this was different from anything I've seen so far. The chest was stacked with iron and gold, and mysterious green crystals littered the inside. Once I mined it and picked it up, it turns out it was another variation of kryptonite. But this one is cooler because it's a 3D model. Now I have enough kryptonite to probably wipe out a small army of kryptonians. The power I have in my hands is immeasurable, and we're only on episode 2. I headed back to the base camp to stow my new belongings away because it's time to mine ladies and gentlemen that's right it's time to get our hands dirty and go mining this will be our first mining expedition of the series so i want to make it a good one mining can sometimes be one of the most peaceful experiences in the game but most of the time it's the most horrifying experience in the game you see normally i have my employees do this shit because i'm way too wealthy to be down here myself but i have no other choice but to take matters into my own hands i'm sure not Nothing will go wrong. What? What the fuck? Is that an Enderman? Am I? What? Why do I have blindness? What? <gasps> oh my God! It's Mervin's uncle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for insulting you at Mervin's family reunion. I didn't mean it. Please leave me alone. Your other mutant friends already milked me dry. I have four, four hearts. Four hearts. I can't do anything. I can't defend myself. I'm dead. I have two and a half. He just can't. I can't do anything. He can teleport. I'm screwed. He's teleporting. I can't do anything. No matter how fast I run. I... I already regret coming down here. That was the second time I've cheated death this episode. At this point, I wouldn't even be surprised if death just decided to drop a nuclear warhead right above me. I don't know how people can play this. I, I don't understand how people can just play modded Minecraft and not lose their sanity. Oh great, a baby zombie. What else are you gonna throw at me, game? I am just... So done with this mining area. I I I just want to get out of here. I just want to leave. 
Are you serious? He's still here? <gasps> oh my god! Please! I'm- Sir, I'm leaving! The cave is yours! It's all yours! I'm leaving! Take whatever you want! I don't care! I'm leaving! Please, just let me leave! I'm doing what you wanted! Everything- He won't let me leave! He won't- Creepers! No! No, 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 no! No! Oh my god! I'm dead! For real? This time I'm dead! There's nothing I can do! I'm being bombarded with bullshit! I can't defend myself! I have to run! No! I'm cornering myself! I'm cornering myself! I can't! 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 No! I can't do this anymore! I can't do this! <laughs> what is happening? Is there a gang war going on outside now? I... No! He's hitting me through the wall! He's hacking! He's hacking! This is even worse than the mutant skeleton! This guy's actually cheating! I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. If he actually manages to teleport his lanky ass in here, I'm done with this series. The iron's all yours, man! Please, just take it! Yeah, in case you couldn't tell, this series has thoroughly traumatized me. I have been attacked by almost all mutant creatures so far, and we're only on episode two. I'd say I'm on the verge of a mental breakdown, but if you were to ask me at this one specific moment, I'd tell you I was already having one. That chase scene felt like I was playing Outlast. What made that chase worse was that I can't handle horror games that well. I steadfastly refused to play any horror game, but yet it felt like I was playing one. It was like I was in a horror movie doing a final girl circuit, and the thing is, I should have died. If I didn't die during the first chase, I definitely should have died during the second, but I didn't. Now I am trapped here underground, cornered, just like I was in episode one with the mutant skeleton. Is this going to be a recurring thing in this series? Am I going to be forced into a corner at some point in every episode? I'm telling you right now, mark my words. When I get my hands on some of those Kryptonian powers, I am going to enjoy butchering and slaughtering every single mutant creature I encounter. Now, I had to make my own way out since I had literally nowhere else to go. I still can't believe that happened. That was quite honestly one of the scariest moments in my 10 years of gaming. At this point, I should just summon Herobrine and turn this series into a full-on horror game. I... I... Are you fucking kidding me? I have to sit here and break the stone with my bare hands? I'M GONNA PUT MY HEAD THROUGH MY MONITOR! <laughs> I thought this whole thing couldn't get any worse. Now I'm forced to break my wrists punching stone. If I don't get my mind together, my spirit is going to be just as broken as my hands. Three minutes. It took me three minutes, three whole minutes to reach the surface. That might not seem like much, but those three minutes felt like three hours to me. Luckily, I was already somewhat near the top, so it wasn't too bad. But just imagine how boring it felt just sitting there, punching stones, letting my anger reach a boiling point. The entire time I was sitting there mining, I was imagining how great it's going to feel to laser that lanky bitch's head clean off his body. But of course, I can't do that until I beat the Ender Dragon because as rule number three of Classic Craft states, I can't use any overpowered stuff prior to the Ender Dragon fight. But mark my words, once I put that Ender Dragon down for good, the first thing I'm doing is hunting down a mutant enderman and a mutant skeleton and making them regret ever messing with me. I mean it! Come back to this episode when I do it! Because if there was ever a good explanation for genocide to be reasonable, it's this case right here. I just want this episode to end. I've been recording way too long, it feels like. I just need a break. But you know what I also need? Therapy. Because after that whole mutant enderman chase sequence, I didn't leave that mine the same way I went in. Also a cheeseburger. A cheeseburger would be nice too. Thank god, now I can just go to bed, and record the outro, and be done. Are you serious? I'm having another exorcism? Is this just another bad omen? No! No, no, no! No, please! Huh. <laughs>
How many more close encounters with death am I gonna have this episode? That's it, I'm recording this outro before anything else can happen. Then again, I wasn't even safe recording last episode's outro. If you're going to drop a nuke on me, Death, please just do it already. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes episode 2 of Classic Craft. I hope you enjoyed it, because I sure as hell didn't. But regardless, I hope this episode runtime was okay with you guys. I'm kind of struggling to figure out the pacing and episode length for this series, so I'm gonna aim from anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. That way, it's enough content for you, and so I could confidently make the every Sunday scheduling. If you enjoyed episode 2 and want to see more Classic Craft, a like goes a long way to support me and keep this going. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to become an employee. I'd love to have you around. And finally, if you're interested in joining my community Discord server, the link is down below along with the rest of my channels. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay classy, everyone. Am I... am I actually good? There, there's no mutant zombies, no mutant skeletons, no mutant endermen. I actually recorded my outro in peace. Whoa, let's go!